Chapter 3 All eyes turn to the cottage as a scream bursts through the air. It is Mahar's scream, and now he stands here on trembling legs, mouth still open, throat aching from his piercing cry. Bailey and Johnson turn from the blaze and come striding heavily up to Mahar. Bailey points an accusing finger. You must stop your evil work. If you want to remain in the village, Johnson adds, if you want to remain alive, you will heed our warning. You will stop your evil work. Mahar sighs and shakes his head sadly. He lowers his eyes to the ground. My work is over, he murmurs. His shoulders tremble. His voice breaks. You have destroyed my life's work. The two farmers stare hard at him for a long moment. Mahar can see the anger and hatred in their eyes. He watches them turn and make their way back to the villagers and the still crackling bonfire. Mahar slams the cottage door shut. He leans against the door, waiting to catch his breath. He wipes the sweat from his beard. The fools, he murmurs. The stupid fools. He peers out of the cottage window to make sure no one is near. Then he crosses the room to a door hidden in the back of his workshop. His hand trembles as he opens it and turns on the lamp. He raises his eyes to the two dummies resting side by side on a shelf against the back wall. Did they really think I'd give up my precious dummies so easily? He says to them. The dummies stare lifelessly straight ahead. They are identical in every way. The only difference, one has olive green eyes, the other's eyes are black. Mahar chuckles. <laughs> the fools. Did they really think I had but one dummy? He reaches for the green-eyed dummy and lowers it from the shelf. He cradles it in his arms. They'll never get you, Mahar tells the dummies. My friends. My true friends. Fools! The dummy cries in a high, tinny voice. Fools! Then both dummies toss back their heads, open their mouths wide, and laugh. Mahar laughs along with them, laughs till he has tears in his eyes. The three of them laugh long and hard, enjoying the good joke.